Well, hello everybody, and welcome to this episode of G Bears Off Grid Ways and Adventures. Yeah, look at this 30 mile an hour winds. And I've seen them hit 37 today. And uh, they're constant all day yesterday, all night last night, with a slight break about 6 in the morning. And I, I woke up and I went, oh, good, I can get things done outside. Well, look at that, 35. But, you know, these winds are totally ridiculous this year. They, they are really, really out of the ordinary ridiculous this year. 36 miles per hour. So, why waste a good opportunity to go outside, walk over to the electric room, and see what kind of electricity I'm producing. I do know that my stuff is blowing all over the desert. Got something out in the middle of the road out there. I got green plastic covers all up against bushes out there. Uh, yeah, just uh, relentless, totally relentless. Oh, look at that. My dump load controller is activated. Haven't seen that in a while. What that means is the yellow light is on. So heat is going, yeah, that's nice and hot. Well, not hot, hot, but putting off some heat. But uh, yeah, what that means is that um, I'm producing way, way, way more electricity than I need. So my solar panels and that stuff, uh, they're resting right now because there's no power needed. No amps coming in, no watts coming in. On this one, let's see, I got 74.2 volts. Uh, only 0.15 amps coming in. 100% charge on the batteries. 14.4 on the charge and 0.5 amps coming in, so half amp. So this is basically resting too. Uh, 24 amp hours. 10 amp hours left on the auxiliary. Batteries are running at 29 degrees Celsius. 15 is the code I've got in, no errors. And 14.4 coming in, but I'm floating. I'm floating! Whee! <laughs> anyway, I had a question about where I got the fan down here. And this one is shut off right now. Oh, it's actually disconnected right now. I'll have to find out where the other part of that wire went. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I got these in Santa Ana, California at uh, Alltech Electronics. I mean, you can go to used computer stores or computer repair stores, things like that, um, and you can buy used CPU fans. These are for computers to keep the, the computers cool. I get them like that and I get them like this or like this. And you can see these are running. And this one is set to automatically turn on when the um, uh, dump load is activated. So what that's doing right now is it's using battery power. Even though I've got all kinds of stuff running inside the cabin. Uh, I need to burn off more power because I got way too much coming in. And you can see every time it, it starts sending power over there, the voltage drops. But I'm still way, way, I'm a whole volt plus above uh, full charge. So I got 108 vo volts coming in on those big solar panels out there. But there's nothing actually coming in because this is resting. Uh, because I don't need any power. The wind's been blowing for two days and nights straight. So it's like, what do I need to create power for? So it's kind of a nice thing, a uh, problem to have to where you could waste all the electricity you want and still have more than you need and not have to pay for any of it. <laughs> That's the best part. So anyway, over here, this is what the winds are doing right now, but they've slowed down a little bit. 
I've seen this thing going um, most of the day running between five and 700 watts coming in. And that's where my finger is right now. So the, the winds have just kind of set down a little bit. But look at the amps coming in here. There's uh, 20, 24, 23, 24. And see there's, there's the winds kicking back up again. 420, 460, 498. Uh, 533, 558, there's another wind gust just went through. So yeah, I'm, I got all 500 extra watts suddenly popping in here and going to the batteries, my battery bank, when I don't need it because everything's up at 14.1 and 14.3. See, I got, I got more power than I could use. So. That's a, oh look, the, uh, this has shut off. Now, before anybody starts asking um, where they can buy one of these, well, you, unless you find a used one somewhere, you're not gonna be able to because nobody sells them like this anymore. All the ones now, instead of having this uh, PWM controller on them, all come with a digital controller. They're more efficient than this system is. But this system is still working. It's been working ever since I got it, like five, six years ago. And uh, there's really no need for me to change it if it's working, right? Don't fix it as, unless it's broken. Unless you work for the government. Then fix it until it is broken. All right, so I'm gonna have to do some battery cleaning here. And uh, let's see, four, 420 was my last uh, service. So I'll have to just check to see if I need to service these because with all that extra um, electricity coming in, oh, it just clicked on again. The uh, winds are gusting. I get a 700. It was, it was punching at 800 watts incoming. Oh, there's 700. Look at that. There's a lot of power coming, oh man. 36, 37 amps, 45 amps, 47 amps. Wow. Uh, the, um, the turbine, the PMA, the permanent magnet alternator I've got it out up there, is uh, six, 1,685, I think it is, watts. I don't know, I haven't looked at that in a while. Yeah, I think 1,685 watts, but that would take 90 mile an hour winds to produce that much. So figuring that I just hit um, nearly half of the uh, total input, the max input, that means I went halfway to 90 mile an hour winds, so I just had a 45 mile an hour gust. <laughs> yeah, they, look at that. They, it's jumping up 400, 480. So right now I would say it's probably about a 30 something, uh, 33, 34 mile an hour gusts of what I'm looking at out there right now. Okay, so I wanted to cover that on this beautiful windy day because there's nothing else I can do. And I'm sure some of you people are interested. Now, whenever I come in here, people are always seeing those controllers up there. Now, I bought those originally when I first got started in solar because I knew absolutely nothing about solar. I even got that one with a, a, a cheap Chinese turbine. And uh, trust me, don't waste your money buying that junk. Don't buy hybrid controllers. These hybrid controllers are junk. I mean... If you're going to run small solar system off of them, fine, you'll be okay. But if you want to run your cabin or your household, you're going to have to get up there, get yourself a midnight. That's where it's all at. Those are the, that's where you get your best control. You get your best service and you get your best power. And then Ames. You want Ames power for your inverters. They are great. Now... I'm not saying they're the only ones out there, 
But they, these are, for the, for the money, these are great, great inverters. Okay, now they remember, this is low, fre low frequency inverter and charger. What they mean by that is I have a line here connected that goes out to a gasoline generator. And if there's a problem where my, I get no power coming in, you know, it's been, let's say I had a month of rain. Oh, God, that would be nice. Uh, if I had a month of rain and uh, no sunshine or anything like that, I'd still have power coming in because I have a lot of amorphous panels that work with just the slightest ambient light. They don't work at full peak, but I do get power coming in from that. But I could fire up the generator and automatically, automatically, this Ames inverter will become a charger. And it will disconnect me from being an inverter and become a charger and charge my battery banks. But at the same time, it'll keep the power coming in from my battery banks and going into my um, electrical panel in the cabin and supplying me with the 120 volt and 220 volt uh, voltages I need whenever I need them in my shop or my cabin. So this is a great system. I mean, really great system. And I've got this uh, switch shut off in here because I have a remote switch that runs on this wire inside of the cabin and I can operate it from in the cabin without having to come out here. If, uh, if the inverter went to overload, then it would shut off for a minute and I'd have to reset it and the alarm would be sounding, the red light would be on, but I don't have to see any of that. It's all inside. I have a switch that looks just like this on a little panel on the inside. I also get to meter my, I've got one of those meters inside so I get to see what kind of uh, power is coming in from the um, solar panels. Now on these, these are Harbor Freight ones and the arrow in the center, if power was coming in, the arrow would be flashing. The arrow being solid means that the batteries are fully charged and no, no power needs to come in to go to my battery banks. They're already fully charged. As you can see, they're trying to get overcharged. So I'm going to go in and turn some thing, more things on inside. I'll turn a couple of TVs on and turn my um, desktop computer. That's like a 800-watt uh, unit. And I've got a laser printer. I can turn that on. I can put a little load on the batteries. Doesn't hurt them. <laughs> it actually helps them. All right, everybody. Questions and comments down below. Don't forget thumbs ups. Don't forget to share and subscribe. This is G Bear signing off.